in the darker shadows, in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes, the order, the order of the Abracast. We are the brave and bold. Ages begins with the shocking story of Cain and Abel and the journey of violence and revenge spanning thousands of years, following Cain through his cursed life from an ancient invasion of malicious angels to the American Revolutionary War. A masterful, compelling journey through time, the Ages delves deep into arcane knowledge, myth, and legend. The art is stunning. And the story takes you on a journey where mortals, immortals, angels, and demons are all forced to deal with the folly that is God's creation. It's a beautifully dark and gritty ride through history. This four-part story follows the astrological procession of the ages and how each 2,500-year age parallels major changes in the development of Earth's inhabitants. Cain's blasphemous struggle with the divine and sacred tyrant God will create and crumble empires, shape history, and cause a cosmic cataclysm. O oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, deign to bless these odoriferous spices so that they may receive strength, virtue, and power to attract the good spirits and to banish and cause to retire all hostile phantoms through the O oh, most holy Od- Adonai who livest and reignest unto the ages of the ages. Amen. I exercise thee, O spirits impure and unclean, and who art hostile phantom, in the name of God, in <clears throat> thou, thou, qu- quit this perfume, thou and all thy deceits, that it may be consecrated and sanctified, in the name of God Almighty. <laughs> May the Holy Spirit of God grant protection and virtue unto those who use these perfumes, and may the hostile and evil spirits and phantoms never be able to enter therein. Through the ineffable name of God Almighty, Amen. O Lord, deign to bless and to sanctify this creature of perfume so that it may be a remedy unto mankind for the health of body and soul. Through the invocation of thy holy name, may all creatures who receive the odor of this incense and of the spices receive health of body and of soul through him who hath formed the ages. Amen. After this, thou shalt sprinkle the various spices with the water of the art, and thou shalt place them aside in a piece of silk, as in other cases, or in a box destined for the purpose so that thou mayest have them ready prepared for use when necessary. When thou wishest to use the incense, thou shalt kindle a fire of fresh charcoal and in earthen vessels, newly glazed within and without. And thou shalt kindle fire fresh with flint and steel. And the fire being lighted, thou shalt say... Over it as follows, before putting the spices thereon. This is the exorcism of the fire. I exorcise thee, O creature of fire, by him through whom all things have been made, so that every kind of phantasm may retire from thee. 
and be unable to harm or deceive in any way through the invocation of the Most High Creator of all. Amen. Blessed be, O Lord, all-powerful and all-merciful, this creature of fire, so that being blessed by thee, it may be the honor and glory of thy most holy name, so that it may work no hindrance or evil unto those who use it. Through thee, O eternal and almighty Lord, and through thy most holy name, amen. This being done, thou shalt put the spices upon the fire and make what perfume and suffumigations thou requirest over fumigations of evil ordor. Thou shalt say, Adonai, Lazai, Delamai, Ema, Elo, Hai. O oh, Holy Father, grant us succor, favor, and grace by the invocations of the Holy Name, so that these things that may serve us for aid in all we wish to perform therewith, and all deceit may quit them, and all, uh, and that they may be blessed and sanctified through the Holy Name. Amen. All that was from chapter 10 of book 2 of the uh, Key of Solomon. <laughs> that fuck that Southern Baptist thing just does not get old for me. I don't know. Does it, I don't I don't know if it's bothering anybody else. Is it bothering you guys? I fucking love it. Isn't that wrong. Right. But I hold the name. The king of the ages of the ages, amen. It's the red horse rising, amen. The Abercast, Occult, History, Conspiracy, Violence. All right, welcome to the Abercast. This is the Greater Key of Solomon Part 2, which if you remember from the first part, <coughs> we're doing it backwards. We're starting at Book 2 and we're working our way to Book 1. So we're going to finish up book two of this evening. And then uh, the first week of next month, we'll finish it up. Um, uh, I'm John. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for coming in. Thanks for clicking in. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for downloading. Hey, can I get an amen? <laughs> so um, before we get started, I'd like to encourage everyone to rate and review on iTunes. Pretty please. <laughs> I don't pretty please very often, so when I do, you know, I, I fucking meet, I meet some business. <laughs> Rate and review on iTunes, come on, you're getting two, uh, two episodes of content this week. I mean, isn't that worth something? Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to go to the Patreon page. Not a whole lot of actions going on over there on the Patreon page. Uh, I'd get some support. We're uh, starting, we're trying to get a Books for Soldiers program going. And plus, I got some, there's a lot of great audio on there that you can only find nowadays on the Patreon. If, if I get shows done early, I post them up on Patreon until we po post them up. Uh, um, on iTunes and so forth. So you guys get a lot of the shows early if you go. And plus, I just want to do the oath. I want to get the oath put on some mason jars so we can all, you know, have something. Something. 
so we could drink together and listen to this show if it's appropriate. <laughs> Not like I don't want you to take your oath mug. You, I don't want you to take your oath jar to work with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> website. Go check out the website. Social media links are at the bottom. And we have a, a featured topic selection section there nowadays. So if you want to listen to, because, you know, we have more than 100 episodes now. So if you want to catch, if you want a place for all the episodes that relate to this episode, all in one place, you just go to that featured topic section on the website right there and it changes every week. Well, almost every week. Uh, it depends on if there's going to be topics carried over to next week's or whatever but uh it's always it's always related to the episode that's playing right now so if you go there right now if you're listening on time if you're not tardy uh you'll find the episodes like uh the lesser keys the three episodes of the lesser keys of solomon will be on there whatever else bullshit that i threw on there so there you go uh, I'm going to just echo this thing that I did from the last episode, um, about, I'm not warning you, I'm not warning everyone to not, you, you listen to paranormal podcasts, like these ghost people or whatever. And they're like, you know, you should never mess around with like Ouija boards. You should never mess around and summon demons and all that stuff. And you'll never hear that from me <laughs> because I, I think I've made, if I didn't make it clear on the lesser keys of Solomon episodes, which was, you know, the last time before the last time that we were summoning demons together. Uh, I believe that these things are a function of depth psychology. <clears throat> so, you know, you're never going to hear me say like, no. And also I think it's a great way to like alter your mind. You know, it's like, it's a way to change stuff. It's a way to play, but play seriously. You know, there are dangers involved with these things. But least of the dangers that you have to worry about is getting your house possessed by a demon or getting it, your body getting possessed by a demon. Like, that's... Come on. I mean, what are you... 14 years old let's just let's just get on with the, the book and i encourage everyone to play around with with this stuff uh fucking light some candles in a dark room and have your wife make you a druid robe and get uh do some go goetic magic you know uh play just use your imagine put your fucking telephone down and use your imagination <laughs> That's what we're all, that's what we're doing here. With all that being said, <laughs> this episode is going to get a little dark, darker than the last episode for sure. You animal lovers out there, there might be a little bit of a trigger warning for you uh, later on in the episode. But you have definitely been, you've definitely been warned. <laughs> you know, usually when I do trigger warnings, they're jokes. <laughs> but this one, I'm like, I might have to actually warn, I might actually have to do a trigger warning on this episode. Because this book is, it's weird. It's, uh, you know, the, the lesser key of Solomon is, uh, is, to it's totally different. It's like a totally different system. Well, well, I'll just say it's like, cousins it's like a system of magic that's different than what the greater key of solomon is saying there's a lot of the same themes you know and there's a lot of the same trappings and devices and a lot of the same method um but the greater key of solomon goes pretty dark where both of them are kind of like you know, they, they say it's dark or it's a left-hand path. And I mentioned the editor from the last episode had made an annotation that he took some of the, he took some of the, uh, incantations or whatever, some of the experiments that had to do with blood out of the book, because in his opinion, whenever you work with blood, it becomes sinister. It's a, um, some sort of, uh, nefarious thing, but the lesser key of Solomon and the, and the greater key of Solomon are both actually very dependent on, uh, on begging God for help 
for help. Begging God to help you summon demons, which is, it's a wild thing. It's, you know, it's like a wild thing. The whole story of King Solomon, who, um, you know, I don't think anyone will argue with anybody, argue with you that these books are not written by Solomon. Um, you know, these books are probably, uh, late medieval to Renaissance era, uh, writings, you know, but with that being said, the legend of Solomon, who is the son of King David and you know, he was the wisest man. You ever heard the thing like cut the baby in half? Like that's all about Solomon. So, um, so his shtick is that he had, you know, in some vernacular, it was, he controlled genies, or the jinn, uh, in some vernacular, they were spirits In some vernaculars, they were demons. He like made that he like controlled them through various means, certain vessels, certain rings, you know, this is where like, uh, the idea of like the green lantern comes, you know, you have a power ring, uh, um, uh, I think it's why it gets tied in with genies a lot too, because genies, you know, invariably have to be enslaved. You know, they're always, they are always enslaved. They're always bound to an object. And even though they're beings of immense power, they're always being told what to do by, uh, by a mortal that they're, you know, kind of sub like a subservience to anyhow, I'm not getting off on a genie thing. I wrote a book about a genie though. So, <laughs> so it's all in there. Um, that's uh, called the, the Jin Jihad, by the way, if you're interested, you can find that on Amazon, you know, you can go to stigmata studios.com to learn more about it. Anyhow, <clears throat> the stories that, uh, Solomon commanded these, we'll just call them demons. Uh, he commanded the, he forced this demon, uh, work <laughs> demon slave workforce to build his you know his temple with the the uh the very famous now temple of solomon you know revisit any of the ep- the freemason episodes that we did you know that's going to become cl- that's going to become clear it, but he also forced them to like die for pearls and to do all these other weird things so you know, the conceit is, is that he's, he is commanding demons. And, you know, when you read the lesser key of Solomon, you know, you don't respect these demons. You treat them like fucking dogs. <laughs> you fucking berate them. You f- f- wield your, your will and your power over them. Um, you know, and in this case, you know, we might get into some of that, uh, when we get into the first book, but you know, right now, a lot of what it is, is it's like flavor flave. <laughs> it's like, it's like the experimenter or the exorcist in this book is like flavor flave. He's just like the little shit talker, you know, and he's got to make sure that, uh, that Chuck D is there to, <laughs> you know, to break up any altercations or to like enforce, like enforce his will. I, I'm not sure, you know, none of that is in my notes to me. I'm just like, I just cracked myself up by thinking of <laughs> Chuck D is God. He's a fucking rap God, man. Chuck D, you know what I'm saying? All right. Anyhow. Uh, so yeah, trigger warning. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's going to get dark. And also, I just wanted to mention this weird thing about how, like, the methodology of the magic of this book is just to be like, yo, God, when I'm going to summon these demons. And when I when I do, I hope you have my back. <laughs> so with that, go ahead and grab your mason jar that does not have the oath printed on it yet. And uh, mix up a gin jihad, buckle up, whatever, because we're going to go summon some demons, bro. We're going to summon some fucking demons right now. Actually, we're going to skip. We just did part of chapter 10. Chapter 11 is all about water and this stuff called hysop. And, uh, you know, if you need to sprinkle water on anything for your experiment, this chapter explains how to do it. And then uh, water and now fire. Okay, so chapter... Chapter 12 of The Light 
and of the fire. It hath been ever the custom among all nations to use and light in sacred to use fire and light in sacred things. For this reason, the master of the art should also employ them in sacred rites, and besides those for reading the conjurations by. And for the incense in all operations, light are necessary in the circle. For this reason, he should make candles of virgin wax. <clears throat> and on the day and hour of Mercury, the wicks should have been made by a young girl, and the candles should be made when the moon is in her increase of the weight of half a pound each, and out of them shall engrave these characters with a dagger. Or the burin of art. Now, again, this pot, this is a not a visual medium, so I don't know. I'm not going to describe these uh, uh, characters. After this, thou shalt repeat over the candles, and thou shalt say, "O Lord God, who governest all things by thine almighty power, give unto me the poor sinner understanding." and knowledge, and do only that which is agreeable unto thee, grant unto me fear, or sorry, grant unto me to fear, adore, love, praise, and give thanks unto thee with a true and sincere faith and per perfect charity. Grant, O Lord, before I die and descend into the realms beneath. And before the fiery flame shall devour me, that thy grace may leave me, may not leave me, O Lord of my soul. Amen. After this, thou shalt add, <laughs> I exercise thee, O creature of wax, by him alone hath created all things by his word, and by the virtue of him who is pure truth. Thou, that thou cast out from thee every phantasm, perversion, and deceit of thy enemy, and may the virtue and power of God enter into thee, so that thou mayest give us light and, cha and chase us far from us all fear or terror. Terror! After this, thou shalt sprinkle them with the water of the art and incense them with the usual perfumes. And when thou shalt wish to kindle them, thou shalt say, I exercise of thee, ah, O creature of fire, in the name of the sovereign and eternal Lord, by his ineffable name, ah, which is Yod, he, thou, he, in the name Ayah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the names of power, El, thou, that thou mayest enlighten the hearts of the spirits which he shall call into this circle, so that he may appeareth before us without fraud and deceit through him who hath created all things. And then thou shalt take the square lantern with panes of crystal glass, and thou shalt fit therein the candle light lighted uh, to read by, and to form the circle or any other purpose for which thou shalt require it. A do do Chapter 13 uh, goes on for more of this stuff uh, for the wizard and his acolytes. In chapter 14, I'm going to start preparing my art supplies like this. This is <laughs> every time I'm going to start a book, I'm going to start this way. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 14 of the pen ink and colors all things employed for writing etc in this art should be prepared in the following manner thou shalt take a male gosling from which thou shalt pluck the third feather of the right wing and in plucking it thou shalt say a dry halai Tamha, Tilanus, 
Athamas, Xenor Adonai, banish from this pen all deceit and error, so that may be the virtue and efficacy to write all that I desire. Amen. <sniffs> After this, thou shalt sharpen it with a penknife of the art, perfume it, sprinkle it, and place it aside in a silken cloth. Thou shall have an ink stand made out of the earth or any convenient matter. <laughs> and in the day and hour of Mercury, thou shalt engrave thereon with the burin of the art of these names. Yod, hey, vu, hey, Metatron, la, 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 Quadich, Elohim, Tazaboeth. And in putting the ink therein, thou shalt say, I exercise thee, O creature of the ink, by Anaraton, by Simulator, and by the name Adonai, and by the name of him who though whom all things were made, that thou be unto me an aid and a succor in all things which I wish to perform by thine aid. As it is sometimes that it is necessary to write with some noble color, as well as to have a, a new and clean box wherein to keep them, the principal colors will be yellow or gold, red, celestial, or azure blue, green, brown, and any other colors that may be requisite. Thou shalt exercise perfume and sprinkle them in the usual manner. We're going to move on to 15 of the pen of the swallow and of the crow. I told you, you animal lovers out there, take the feather of a swallow or of a crow. And before plucking it out, say, may holy Michael, the archangel of God and Midiel and Muriel, the chiefs and captains of the celestial army be my aid in the operation I'm about to perform so that I may write here with all things which are necessary and which all the experiments which I commence here with through you and through your names be perfected by the power of the most high creator. Amen. After this, thou shalt point and complete the pen with the, the knife of the art. I imagine that this is the knife with the white handle. It doesn't say, but I imagine that's what it is. And with the pen and ink of the art, thou shalt write upon it, the, its side, the name, an Araton, and thou shalt say over it the following. Uh, it just lists some Bible verses, Psalms. I'm not going to try to figure that out. <laughs> 133. Psalms 133? Sure. Psalms, uh, I don't know. Okay. Chapter uh, 16. The blood. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Just a reminder, trigger warning. The blood of the bat, pigeon, and other animals. Take a living bat and exercise it thus. Hold on for a second, though. All right, chapter 16. Of the blood of the bat, pigeon, and other animals, take a living bat and exercise it thus. Oh, wait, look at the time. Chapter 16 of the blood of the bat, pigeon, and other animals. Take a living bat and exercise it thus. The exorcism of the bat. Kamich 
Emo Hey, Email A, Mac Ball, Emo Zizen, Maya Fat, Zacharath Tendak, Vlamhai. By these most holy names and the other names of angels, which are written in the book of Asamayen, I conjure thee, O bat, or whatever animal it may be, that thou assist me in this operation by God the true, God the holy, and God who hath created thee, and by Adam who hath imposed thy true name upon thee, and upon all other animated beings. After this, take a needle or other convenient instrument of the art, as will be said later on, and pierce the bat in the vein which is in the right wing and collect the blood in a small vessel over the over the <clears throat> over the which you over the which thou shalt say that sounds weird in my brain and collect the blood in a small vessel oh over they just added a the okay let me hear i'm going to redeem this <laughs> the, uh after this, take a needle or other convenient instrument of the art, as will be said later on, and pierce the bat in the vein which is in the right wing, and collect the blood in a small vessel over which thou shalt say, Almighty Odonai, Erathron, Ashai, Elom, Elohim, Elohai, Elion, Asher, Eah, Shaddai, O God, the Lord, Immaculate, Immutable, Emmanuel, Mezak, Yod, Hey, Vu, Hey, and by aid, so that this blood may have the power and efficiency, efficacy, <laughs> in all wherein I shall wish, and in all that I shall demand, Perfume it and keep it for use. The blood of other winged animals may be taken in the same manner with the proper solemnities. I, mean, I had a problem with that last night, too. Okay, uh, I highlighted this because this is what I was talking about. Uh, note by editor. <laughs> I cannot too strongly impress on the readers of this volume that the use of blood is more or less connected with black magic, the magic of the left-hand path, <laughs> the devil's magic, the dark arts, <laughs> and that it should be avoided as much as possible. <laughs> No, and I agree. You shouldn't be walking around sticking animals, I don't think. Chapter 17. Here you go. Watch this. A virgin parchment or virgin paper and how it should be prepared. <laughs> this seems like a real pedestrian... <laughs> go shopping for the right stationary chapter, but shit's about to get dark, dudes dark virgin paper or card is that which is pure clean and exercised having never served for any other purpose virgin parchment is necessary in many magical operations and should be properly prepared and consecrated there are two kinds one called virgin and the other unborn Virgin parchment is that which is taken from an animal which hath not attained the age of generation, whether it be a ram or kid or other animal. Unborn parchment is taken from an animal which hath been taken before its time from the uterus of its mother. Take whichever so of these two classes of animals thou pleaseth, provided only that it be male. And in the day and hour of Mercury, it's Mercury because you're writing stuff down. It's all about communication and take it to a secret place where no man may see thee at work and shall 
thou shalt have a marsh reed, cut a single stroke with a new knife, and thou shalt strip it from the leaves, repeating this conjuration. All right, before we go to the conjuration of the reed, I just want to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. (laughs) When we say parchment, we think fancy paper. Like I was explaining, we were, my wife and I were talking about this last night, this particular thing. And I was like, I explained to her what virgin parchment was and what unborn parchment was. And she, she was disgusted. And I was like, no, no, no. Back in the day, parchment was made from animal skin. They had parchmenteers or parchmenters who would skin skin the animal hang it up and they would like do they would like cut layers thin layers of the hide down to make parchment and she was like boy when i make parchment i just use tea bag i just use tea (laughs) you know um but So what we're talking about here is killing a young animal before it, uh, before it starts fucking, you know, before it does what animals do on the discovery channel and build parchment paper out of this animal or the more disturbing one, which is cutting open a mother animal and taking the baby animal and making parchment out of that before it passes through the birth canal. So, like I said, it's it gets dark. <laughs> and it's I also didn't realize this, but it's has to be um it has to be a male animal, ram or goat or whatever. That's interesting. That's interesting. The conjuration of the reed. I conjure thee by the creator of all things and by the king of angels, whose name is El Shaddai. And thou receivest strength and virtue to lay this animal and to construct the parchment whereon I may write the holy names of God. And that I may acquire so great a virtue that all which I shall write (coughs) or do may obtain its effect. Through him who liveth under the eternal ages. Amen. Before cutting the reed, you have to recite this psalm. After, I really should have wrote down the the, um, the American version of these uh, Roman numerals. Because, I, I mean, I'm good up until, like, 50. Once it gets to 50, it gets real dodgy for me, these uh, Roman numerals. After this, with the knife of the art, thou shalt fashion a reed unto the shape of a knife. And upon it thou shalt write these names, Ag- Agla, Adonai, and Elohai. Though uh, through whom be the work of this knife accomplished, then thou shalt say, O God, who drewest Moses, thy well-beloved and thine elect, and among the reeds on the marshy banks of the Nile and from the waters, he being yet but a child, grant unto me through thy great mercy and the compassion that this reed may receive power and virtue to, eff- <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize to effect that, which I desire thy holy name and the names of thy holy angels. Amen. This being done, thou shalt commence with the knife and flay the animal, whether it be virgin or unborn, saying, Zohar Zayo, Talamai Adonai, Shaddai, and Tetragrammaton, and ye holy angels of God, be present and granted power and virtue unto this parchment, and may it be consecrated by you. So that all things which I shall write thereupon shall attain their effect. Amen. The animal being flayed, take salt and say thus over it. God of gods, Lord of lords, who has created all things from negative existence, deign to bless and sanctify this salt so that in placing it upon this parchment, which I wish to make it may have such a virtue that whatsoever I may write upon it. 
hereafter may attain its desired end. Amen. Afterwards, rub said parchment with the exercise salt and leave it in the sun to imbibe this salt for the space of an entire day. Then take a large earthen vessel glazed within and where without round the outside, round the outside, round the outside of which thou shalt write the characters in figure 88, which I'm not going to describe. After this, thou shalt put powdered lime into the vessel. And after you put the lime in the vessel, you put ice cubes in the vessel. And after you put ice cubes in the vessel, you put gin in the vessel. And after you put gin in the vessel, you put tonic in the vessel. And then you smile and you shake it over your shoulder and serve it in mason jars with the oath of the Abercast printed on them. Patreon.com slash Abercast. I'm sorry. After this, thou shalt put powdered lime in the vessel, saying, O rise, Zoran, Zane on. Zevaron, Zaphiel, and Elion be present and bless this work so that it may attain the desired effect through the king of the heavens and the god of the angels. Amen. After then, uh, exercised water and poured. Oh, that's what I should have. That it should have been exercised tonic water. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole new. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole new. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole new recipe. And then exercise water and pour it upon said lime and place the skin therein for thee, or sorry, for three days, after which thou shalt take it thence and strike, scrape it there from the lime and flesh, adhering uh, uh, with the knife of reed. And after this, thou shalt cut with a single stroke a wand of hazel long enough for thee to form a circle therewith. And take also a cord spun by a young maiden and small stones or pebbles from a brook, pronouncing these words. O oh God, O oh Donai, holy and powerful Father, put virtue into these stones, and they may serve to stretch this parchment, and chase therefrom all fraud it may obtain, virtue by thine almighty power. So this is just a double down. Like, you've already taken this animal before it was fucking, it, or in the most radical case, before it was even born, before it could even sin at all in any kind of way it can animals sin anyways okay so you take the animal before it was born to keep it from carnal knowledge or whatever and then you still have to exercise its skin while you made it into paper after this having stretched said parchment upon the circle and bound it with the cord and stones thou shalt say agla yod hey vu a aya emmanuel bless and preserve this parchment so that no phantasm may enter therein okay well i guess i should just read one more line in before I freaked out. <laughs> he's, uh, it's still like a doubling down though. It's, he's, uh, it's, a it's a spell to prevent its, uh, corruption. That's interesting. Uh, let it dry thus for three days in a dark and shady place. And then cut the cord with the knife of art and detach the parchment from the circle saying, and tore and core turalos bendonos fire hair Afra. This one sounds literally, if it was the phonetic <laughs> spelling, it would be Africar. <laughs> it just reminds me of Diant word for some reason. It's an Africars. I think of Vicky and I like you a lot. Uh, be present for a guard unto this parchment, then perfume it and keep it in silk ready for use. No woman, if her flowers be upon her, should be permitted to see this parchment. Otherwise it will lose its virtue. He who maketh 
it should be pure, clean, and prepared. So, do I have to explain this? If her flowers be upon her, I think we all get it. But if the preparation of the aforesaid parchment seemeth too tedious, thou may make it in a following manner, but it is not so good. (laughs) Take any parchment and exercise it. Prepare a censer with perfumes, write upon the parchment the characters in figure 89, hold it above the incense and say, hold on, I want to lubricate up for this. Be ye present to aid me, and my operation be accomplished through you. Zazai, Zalmaya, Dalamai, Adonai. Oh, here's a good one. Anaphexaton. Anaphexaton, yeah. <clears throat> Sidrion, Cripion, Pyron, and Tyrion, Elion. Octim. Octum, Octin, Oman, Vezinon, Alzion, Zidion, Agla, uh, uh, On, Yode, Vauhe, Artor, and Dinator. Holy angels of God, be per- present and infuse virtue into this parchment. <laughs> So that it may attain such power that all the names and characters thereon written may receive due power. And that all deceit and hindrance may depart therefrom through God, the Lord merciful and gracious. Who liveth and reigneth through all the ages. Amen. Thou shalt, then thou shalt recite over the parchment a bunch of different psalms and then you have to say i conjure thee o parchment by all the holy names and thou all abstaineth efficacy and strength and become an, becomest exercised and consecrated so that none of these things may be written upon thee shall be affected from the book of truth amen Then sprinkle it and keep it as before said. The calls of the newborn children duly consecrated may be used instead of the virgin parchment. What? Hold on. Oh, so this is, he's talking about like afterbirth, I think, right? The calls of newborn children duly consecrated may be used instead of virgin parchment. Also, after satin, silk, and like substance may be employed in operations of left's importance, if duly exercised and consecrated. Ugh. All right, well, (laughs) I need a drink after that. Yeah, I was right. I actually stopped recording to look up what a call is. And a call is an amniotic membrane enclosing the fetus, a woman's close-fitting indoor headdress or hairnet. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they're talking about the first definition, not the last definition. <laughs> you can use a bonnet if you need to, but um, okay. Uh, where am I at? So chapter 18, we do uh, wax and virgin earths remember we need the virgin earths to make the uh the vessels to make the paper and to uh house the ink chapter 19 is how to bless needles and so forth which is more of the same you're just saying prayers over it and uh with the sensors and maybe the holy water and all this chapter 20 is silk cloth there's been a lot of shit talked about silk wrapping things in silk cloth so of course there's a whole chapter on how to prepare the silk cloth and then we're gonna get into chapter 21 chapter 21 it's called concerning characters and the consecration of the magical book who whensoever in any operation it is necessary to write characters and thou fearest that thou wilt fail, do this right at the beginning of the name. Yeehaw! 
You know, I love that fucking one. Ashier, yeehaw! And uh, at the at the end, the name Ian Sof. Between these names, write what thou wiltst. And if thou hast anything special to do, bear the said written names upon the wrapper in silk, and thou shalt sayest over them, Most wise and high creator of whole things, I pray thee for thy grace and mercy, and thou mayest grant such virtue and power unto these holy names, that thou mayest keep these characters from all deceit and error through thee, O most high O most holy Adonai, amen. After having repeated this, thou shalt write the requisite characters, and thou shalt not fail, but thou shalt attain thy desired end. And then we have to go on to the consecration of the book. Make a small book containing the prayers for all of these operations. The names of the archangels in forms of litanies and their seals and characters, which being done, thou shalt consecrate the name or the same unto God and unto the pure spirits in the manner following. Thou shalt set the destined place, a small table covered with white cloth. Thereon thou shalt lay the book opened at the great pinnacle, which should be drawn on the first leaf of said book, and having kindled a lamp which should be suspended above the center of the table, thou shalt surround said table with a white curtain, clothe thyself in the proper vestments, and holding the book open, repeat upon thy knees the following prayer with great humility. For the prayer beginning, Adonai, Elohim, etc. See book one. All right, so we'll get to that later. After, after thou which shalt inc- uh, incense it with the uh, the incense proper to thy planet and day, thou shalt replace the book of the aforesaid table, taking heed. I'm getting a weird feedback. Are you guys hearing that? I mean, we're static in here. I'm talking to you like you're going to answer me. (laughs) I'm hoping that's just in my cans. Taking heed of the fire of the lamp, be kept up continually during the operations and keeping the curtains closed. Repeat the same ceremony for seven days. Beginning with Saturday and perfuming the book each day with the incense proper to the planet ruling that day and hour and keeping heed that the lamp shall burn both day and night after the witch shall uh, shut up the book in a small drawer under the table and made expressly for it until thou shalt have occasion to use it. What is that? That's it. My soundboard's possessed, bros. I really fucked myself this time. (laughs) And every time thou wishest to use it, clothe thyself with thy vestments, kindle the lamp, and repeat upon thy knees the aforesaid prayer. It is necessary also to consecrate the book, to summon all the angels whose names are written therein in form of litanies, which shall do with devotion. And even if the angels and spirits appear not in the consecration of the book, but not uh, be not thou astonished thereat, seeing that. They are pure of nature and consequently have much difficulty in familiarizing themselves with men who are inconsistent and impure. But the ceremonies have characters being correctly carried out devoutly and with perseverance. Uh, They will be constrained to come and uh, it will at length happen that thy first invocation that will be... 
uh, to see if they communicate with them. But I advise thee to undertake nothing unclean or impure for then the, thy opportunity far from attracting them will only serve to chase them from thee. And it is, and it will be therefore exceedingly difficult for thee to attract them for pure ends. All right, here we go. Here's the main event, <laughs> right? Yeah, this is it. Oh, it's good. I really timed this out really well. Chapter 22 concerning sacrifices to be made or sorry, sacrifices to the spirits and how they should be made in many operations. It is necessary. I'm sorry for all the snorting, by the way, my nose has been busted like five times. I'm lucky if I could get one nostril at a time working. And for some reason tonight, it's just breathing out of my nose. Really giving me a hard time. So I appreciate you tolerating my, my snorting in many operations. It is necessary to make some sort of sacrifice unto the demons and in various ways. Sometimes white animals are to be sacrificed to the good spirits and black to the evil. Such sacrifices consist of the blood and sometimes the flesh they who sacrifice animals to whatsoever kind they be should select those which are virgin and being made agreeable unto the spirits and rendering them more obedient. When the blood is to be sacrificed, they should be drawn also from virgin quadrupeds or birds. But before offering the obla <clears throat> offering the oblation, say May this sacrifice, which we find it proper to offer unto thee, or sorry, ye noble and lofty beings, it is agreeable and pleasing unto your desires. Be ye ready to obey us, and ye shall receive greater ones. Wow, that is quite a bargain to be made first of all they're talking about you have to sacrifice white animals to good spirits and black animals to evil spirits what kind of good spirit needs a sacrifice of blood that seems weird and then you're also saying like hey i'm gonna give this to you and if you do what i say i'm gonna give you a greater sacrifice meaning more blood or maybe uh, a bigger animal <laughs> i mean wow then perfume and sprinkle it accordingly to the rules of art. When it is necessary with all the proper ceremonies to make a sacrifice of fire, they should be made of wood, which hath some quality referring especially to the spirits evoked as juniper or pine unto the spirits of Saturn box or Oak unto those of Jupiter Cornell or Cedar unto those of Mars Laurel unto those of the sun Myrtle unto those of Venus Venus uh, rocket number nine take off from the planet the planet Venus Hazel unto those of Mercury and willow unto those of the moon. But when we make sacrifices of food and drink, everything necessary should be prepared without the circle and the meats should be covered with some fine, clean cloth and have also a clean white cloth spread beneath them. The new bread and good and sparkling wine, but, um, in all things uh, which refer to the nature of the planet. Animals and such fowls or pigeons should be roasted, especially shouldest thou have a vessel of clear and pure fountain water. And before thou enterest into the circle, thou shalt summon the spirits by their proper names, or at least those chief among them, saying, In whatsoever place ye may be, ye spirits are invited to this feast. 
Come ye and be ready to receive our offerings, presents, and sacrifices. Ye and ye shall have hereafter yet more agreeable oblations. Perfume and viands with sweet incense and sprinkle them with exercised water and then commence to conjure the spirits until they come. <laughs> Thus is the manner of making sacrifices in all arts and operations where it is necessary and acting thus the spirits will be prompt to serve thee. Here endeth our key. I really like this. Here endeth our key, in which if thou thoroughly instillest unto thy memory, thou shalt be able. It is, uh, if it pleaseth thee, even to fly with the wings of the wind, if thou uh, takest little heed thereof, despisest this book, thou shalt... Uh, ne or sorry, despite this, this book, never shalt thou attain unto the desired end in any magical experiment or operation whatsoever. For in this book is compromised or comprised all science of magical art, and it should be strictly kept by thee. And here unto here unto is the end of our key in the name of God and the righteous and merciful and the eternal who liveth and re reigneth <laughs> throughout the ages. Amen. This is the end of the key of Solomon, the king, but not for us. This is just the beginning <laughs> because the first week and next month, we're going to finish uh, this book. We're going to do the key, uh, the greater key of Solomon book one. We're working backwards. Remember that because it's important. Um, yeah. So that's it. I mean, I timed this out pretty good. We ran a little bit long, but I think we ran a little bit short last episode. So I'm making up for time. You know, you fucking, you fucking know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Please remember to hit up the website. Please. If you're interested in this topic, please check out the related, uh, or the featured topic, uh, um, tab on the website so you can get access to it's just streaming right there. You can just put it on your phone and just listen to all of them. Um, if not, you can use that with your iTunes or your Stitcher to find the episodes that you want instead of wading through the hundred plus episodes that are out there. Uh, please remember to check out the Patreon. And remember, you get two hours of this shit, basically. I mean, basically two hours of this shit this week. So, I mean, that's not something that most podcasts will do for you. I'm giving you two fucking hours. That's pretty impressive, right? I think so. I mean, I'm looking at this stack of comic book stuff I'm not working on because I'm doing an extra episode this week. So come on, bros. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm John. This has been the Abercast. Thank you guys rate and review on iTunes. Uh, remember the show is also available on YouTube nowadays, which is pretty cool. Oh God. All right. Well, I gotta go. This gin's getting on top of me. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Yeah. You know, all right. So we're going to do this and then uh fucking fight. Soda jerk's going to, to play us out. They're going to play us out. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Play us out. Vienna, 1683. Today is September 11th, 1683. The mighty army of the Ottoman Empire, led by the savage and radical terror troops of the Dar al Harb, surround the walled city of Vienna and begin a siege to break the golden apple of Europe, and kill, enslave, or convert all of its inhabitants. The valiant citizens stand against the tyrannical army with the steadfast leadership of Count Ernst Rüdiger von Stromberg, the help of the ever-living rebel Cyrus the Dead Guy, and the hopes of the faraway King Jan Sobieski III and his army of flying hussars. The Vienna 1683 comic is available right now from Stigmata Studios, 
at stigmatastudios.com and on indieplanet.us. The Non-Standard Squad, 1944 World War II Three weird American soldiers are on a search and rescue mission into the oldest and darkest regions of Europe. A cursed ever-living warrior, Cyrus the Dead Guy. An experimental war bot, Sergeant Lane McCord. An all-red axe, mysterious rogue with a demon-possessed arm come face to face with an army of magically corrupted machine-obsessed elves, a magic hammer wielding Norse ubermensch, and a Nazi wizard who is a member of the ancient Dark Order of the Shiny Hexagon. The Non-Standard Squad 1944 comic is available right now from Stigmata Studios at stigmatastudios.com and on indieplanet.us. Shot of whiskey and say good. 